Hey everybody, today is Wednesday, September 7th, 2022 in sunny San Diego, California, and I'm Captain Perry here with you. If you're new to the channel, down in the garage is a scow bow mini cruiser that I'm building, but today I'm joining you from upstairs. Climate control, dust free, what luxury. Today we're gonna do something new, an interview with a metal fabricator who has made two beautiful custom pieces of hardware for my mini cruiser. In my early videos, I asked for help from anyone locally who might be able to help me fabricate my twin keels out of steel and to pour lead. A metal fabricator who is not only a viewer, but also a Patreon member, reached out to me from Florida with an offer to help. He told me that although he lived too far away to help with the keels, he'd be willing to fabricate other parts for me at only the cost of materials and shipping. Well, what an incredible offer. Two parts came to mind for me. One was a deck fair lead like the one I'd seen on the bow of Baluchon, and the other was a custom bearing to mount on the mast step that would allow the mast to spin freely. New viewers may not know, but I'm going to be sailing with a Jungstrom rig, which means the whole mast is freestanding and spins to furl up the sail. So with that said, let's meet Mike. Hey Mike, how's it going? Hey, pretty good, what's going on man? How are things down in Florida? That's good. It's just, uh, you know, 8 p.m. here, just doing school stuff. I'm uh, actually an engineering class. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is actually the first time we've spoken. Yeah, it is, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, I'm loving all the boat videos. Like, everything's coming along. She's looking great. Oh, thank you so much. I've, I've started to be a bit more productive. I want to start by asking, how did you even get into metal fabrication? Um, honestly, YouTube. There, there's a there's an extremely robust metalworking community here. Um, almost everything I know is totally self-taught, and it's just through the the benevolence of people with experience to post videos and you know all of that that I've learned what I know. And now I teach. Uh, there's a maker space in town, uh, and I do you know, machine shop and TIG welding classes there. So it's just a constant flow of information. You know, I try to take in what I can and try to, you know, give back what I can. Nice. How long have you been doing this? Uh, must, must be going on like eight years. You, you got a, sh your shop is like in your garage or? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, one car garage, not a ton of space, but even in a one car garage, you know, you have a lot of, a lot of room for your two basic machines, like your lathe and your mill or, Kind of your bread and butter and then everything else is just supporting equipment uh, it, it's just very cool to get so much strength out of the material that i'm able to work um the accuracy is also really cool like my smallest um like increment that i can manage with my equipment is about a half of a thousandth of an inch yeah so, you know and i saw you recently uh, on your instagram you're like putting a uh, like a squat rack on the side of a minibus or something what is that for? Uh, that's, that's my buddy, Tony. He, uh, he runs Reset Athletics in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and he's a big like strength training kind of guy. So him and, his, him and his friends go to these athletic meets, and he's got this tour bus. We've done all kinds of cool stuff for it. Like I built a, I built a custom stainless steel table that we, we installed the old bus seats and there's kind of like a podcasting desk set up where you've got like the two chairs and the table yeah. in the middle. But we also wanted to make the table foldable, but also not cover the windows. So the whole thing picks up, it's on a sliding rail and it can move over and it can set behind the first bench seats. Um, and then the whole thing folds up against the wall where there are no windows. So that, that bus has all kinds of cool projects on it. Are you making your living by doing these kind of custom fabrications like you did for me or part teaching, part making parts? Or? Uh, my, my actual day job, uh, like my nine to five, is actually working in window coverings. My company is based in Irvine, in California. Why are you helping me, an internet stranger? Um, you just seem like a cool dude. Uh, I, I, really, I really support the project. Like I, I think that somebody going out and just making something like this totally from scratch is, is epic. Um, and the dream of, you know, actually taking it across oceans like that is that is just cool. I, I have access to some equipment that 
you know, the, the barrier to entry is really high, unfortunately, to get into metalworking, particularly machining. So anytime I can, you know, help someone that, you know, obviously has a different skill set and a different set of equipment, it's just you know, it's, it's a good feeling to be able to bring my skill set to a, a project that I think is really cool and really deserving. Oh, thanks. Um, so have you helped out any other YouTube channels with fabrication? And, and if so, what was the project? Um, a while back, I reached out to uh, Alex French Guy Cooking. But a while back, he had a, a pasta machine that was hand crank. And he mentioned in a video, he's like, oh man, I wish I could attach a drill somehow. So I walked up to the garage and, you know, an hour or two later, I had an adapter. So I made, made him one and sent it to Paris and he, uh, you know, used it in a video series where he was trying to make dried pasta from scratch. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, dried ramen, dried ramen from scratch. Let's move on to the, okay. the first item you uh, made for me, which is a, a deck fair lead. And so... My request for you was to make a fair lead like the one on Balushan. And I sent over these pictures, which uh, I'll insert here. Mm -hmm. um, so talk me through your fabrication process for this and how long did it take? I got the item here. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was, uh, that's a uh, Sven's boat, Balushan? Uh, no, it's um, Jan Cunet, the French, um, the Frenchman who just finished sailing around the world in his little 14 foot boat. Cool. Yeah, this was, this was actually an interesting one um, because I, I don't really have the equipment to form those bends. Um, what you would, what you would probably use for something like that is uh, a tool called a ring roller, or you can use a universal bender. You know, those are tools that specialize in, you know, putting, putting, you know, continuous, continuous radius, uh, forms into your parts. Um, I, I don't have either tool. Uh, they're fairly expensive and bulky and I've just never bothered. So I, I, I can actually send some photos for this if you want to insert. But what I ended up doing was I, I made a bending form on my workbench. I have, a, I have a steel plate as part of my workbench that's about a half inch thick. And I have a pattern of holes drilled into it that are threaded for one half 13 um, thread. So what I ended up doing was I, I turned an aluminum plug that was essentially the inner diameter of that curve on the ends. And then I, I put a clamp against the edge of the metal piece and then bent the metal around that curve. There's always a spring back. Uh, engineering world calls it a K factor in, in the formation of any kind of bent, bent feature in a metal part. And you can look on online calculators. So I ended up reducing the radius of that bending form by whatever the program spit out so that by the time the metal kind of bent back after the bend, it was at the right diameter. And you're just bending it by hand, like pulling yeah. it? Yeah. And do, yeah. You apply, do you apply heat? No, that was done cold. Okay. And uh, what material did you use or materials? Um, that's that's 316L. Um, it's a it's a marine stainless with a little bit of a lead content. Um, the lead in the alloy makes it easier to machine. Um, it's weldable, which obviously good news for putting those tabs on. But 316 is always the preferred stainless alloy for anything marine. And also the the radius ends there were done with I have a ball turning attachment that I made for my lathe, so I can you know those those sort of spherical ends on the on the loops there those were turned on the lathe prior to the bending and the well how is a metal made stainless um stainless has chromium in it primarily um chromium is the primary metal that makes stainless corrosion resistant um but it's interesting when you're tig welding you have to be very careful with stainless in the tig welding process it gets very hot and chromium actually has a, a vapor a vapor point that when you're at welding temperature, you're kind of close to. So if you get your weld too hot, the chromium can actually turn into a gas in the molten puddle, and it can literally evaporate out of the molten metal during welding. And yeah. that weld region will then rust because it's lost right. chromium, and you'll probably develop... You've turned it from stainless steel into something else. Yeah, some like, you know, just, just nickel, nickel uh, carbon steel or something. The next thing I asked you 
to make was the um, mass bearing. But it's actually, this is the first thing we talked about making. Um, so the request was to make a bearing to mount into the mass step that allows the mass to spin freely with uh, materials that are strong and won't rust. So am I giving this thing the right name, a bearing? And I'm going to show it here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I guess I guess it's a, it's a type of plane bearing. Um, you know, plane bearings like bushings and sleeves and stuff that rotate. It's funny to say what the initial design idea was and then what the final design ended up being yeah. and how that changed. I'm, I'm thinking machine design when we started talking about this, right? I'm like, if you were to do this in a, in a high load application, like commercially, like what would you do? Well, you'd probably use something like bearing bronze, which is a type of high lubricity metal. It, bronze has a softness to it and a slipperiness that makes it a really good fit in bearings and you know sliding metal on metal contact um you would never want something like stainless on stainless in a running in a running action um stainless has a really nasty tendency to gall that is the stainless tends to rub its oxide layer off when it touches another another stainless part and where that interface happens there's essentially no atmosphere in the middle because they're touching. So the stainless kind of micro welds to itself. And then it, when it turns, it, it pulls and it breaks that connection and it destroys the surface finish. And over time, you can get stainless parts that are all like galled up and they look like they've been through hell when you separate the two of them. And it's because of that kind of micro welding and micro fracturing process. Um, so I was thinking we do like a, a bronze insert um, that we, you know, do some score lines on the inner diameter of the bushing and a hole to a, a grease fitting so we can pump it full of grease because that's what you do in a machine. And, right. you know, we started talking about this and we're like, you know what, maybe, like, this is a boat. Like, maybe it's a little, like, this isn't an industrial machine. Um, I was like, I don't want to have to bring a grease gun. <laughs> <laughs> kind of scaled that back and went, went, landed on Delrin um, for the bushing material. Uh, Delrin is a, I think it's, I think it's glass fiber reinforced. It's a, you know, engineering plastic that's used in, you know, all kinds of machining applications. It's fluted, as we can see here, to provide grip for the epoxy. It has these V-shaped channels. I think there's 26 of them um, all the way around the diameter. And then it has these sort of annular bands as well cut into it with a square profile. There's a lot of mechanical tooth there. Like, I'm sure you'll hear in DIY videos all the time, well, rough up the surface with sandpaper before you put the glue on. This is yeah. kind of the, the OCD version of that. <laughs> yeah, Mike, this is pretty beautiful for something that's never going to be seen once installed. I just got a new dividing head, so I was having a blast. So uh, for this metal part, is this two parts or one? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's two parts. Um, the central shaft was turned first to one inch, one inch diameter. And then the, the flange was made in a separate piece. The first thing that you do with it is you flatten one face and then you kind of mark off your circle and take it to the bandsaw and cut off most of your material. Then you get it on the lathe and you turn, you turn it to a perfect circle. And now you got a disc, right? You got a nice machined disc. And then the center portion that's raised is the bearing like the, the sort of um, thrust bearing, right? Like that's what's going to take up the the, for, the down force on the mast. Yeah. Um, and then it's just press fit in. You, what you do is you basically just, you make the hole slightly smaller than the pin. And then you take a, a really powerful press. Like I have a 20 ton hydraulic press in my shop and you literally just force that pin through the plate. I don't know that I was maxing out my press, but I would guess 10 to 15 tons of force to get that in. If you didn't have to do school right now or work and you could do start any project you wanted in in your garage, what would it be? Making building a boat maybe? Man, I, man, I, I wish I could work on my boat. Um, I, I would love to do like more in-depth glass work. Like what I would really love to do is rebuild my transit. All right, well, you should say what kind of boat you have. What is this we're talking about? Yeah, I have a, a like a 30, 38 year old trash can of a boat. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a fiberglass manufacturer called um, IMP. But, What's uh, the length? 21 overall. Okay. 
It had a it had an inboard V8 um, 225 horsepower OMC Stringer Stern drive. That was its power plant, and literally the first like the like the first time I took it out, the bolts sheared that hold the lower unit into the stern drive, and I lost the lower unit in the intercoastal. Um, I had to get towed back like the hundred feet I was away from the dock. I had to get towed back by a jet ski. It was humiliating. I found a guy just like on Facebook Marketplace. He did the the repair on the transom. Like he put in new, you know, new uh, marine ply and blasted in to fill the hole when I took out the old engine and stern drive. And then I put a bracket on it and I have an outboard on it now. But uh, that transom is not in good shape. Like I've drilled into it a couple times for doing railings or transducers or whatever. And it's it's kind of getting into the like firm mush stage. I built these steel plates that screw into the stringer mounts for the old motor. Maybe and have... boating around like this soon with your heavy stern. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it, she's she's got a really good weight distribution to her. Like I thought adding that big motor on the back was going to be a problem, but she trims great. Um, but I, 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 I triangulated, so like my transom's here, right? And my, you know, heels here. I, I, I like triangulated that with these steel tubular things that I made. Like, I really think that whole steel structure, I'll send you a picture of it, you can put up. But uh, I think that's really what's doing the bulk of the support for the outboard. How can people find you um, if they want to get some high quality metal fabrication done for their project? And uh, um, do you want to promote your Instagram here? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll put it up here. But I'm Ferris Cuisine on Instagram. My two loves, metal and cooking, are on there. Um, you know, a lot of the, the personal projects and the client projects I do, where people are, uh, you know, kind enough to give me permission to post photos, are on there. Uh, I get some people that, you know, they, they don't want their stuff on the internet, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, I'm Ferris underscore Cuisine. I'm sure, we'll put it up in the thing somewhere. Uh, and yeah, you know, reach out, even if you just have a metalworking question, you know, I like to support the maker world. So, you know, if you also, if you know anything about, uh, Evan Root Ocean Pros, please hit me up. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this interview and especially the amazing work, uh, that you've done for me. These pieces are truly beautiful and, uh, I hope. I uh, get the chance to make some more stuff with you uh, in the future. Yeah, man, for sure. It's been fun. You know, let me know what you're thinking and, and good luck on the project. She's coming along. Yeah, man. All right. Well, great talking to you and uh, I'll talk to you soon, I hope. Yeah, have a nice night. Bye. Also, capable, so capable. A big thank you to my patrons. Patreon members get access to a full build photo gallery and get to watch episodes one day early, among other benefits. Another great way to support the project is through the Amazon wishlist. If you want to see some piece of hardware on the deck and know that you contributed it to the boat, head on over there through the link below. If nothing else, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed. It's free. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.